that this is really interesting even to those who already know about marketing research, which is where I grew up um, in, in my, my career, and also about the business life cycle. So I'm not going to spend too much time on those things, um, but I'm going to use some very basic terms and hopefully give you um, answers to your questions no matter where you are in this process. What I've done is I've packed this with really some basic ideas and examples, and I hope that you will stay in touch with me afterwards um, so that you can learn more about them. So this is sort of an introduction for everybody. So here we go. Are we ready? What we're going to do today is talk about modern day marketing, and you'll see these little pictures on the left as they come up. So that one's kind of a clue that we're going to be talking about storytelling. I don't know if you can tell. And then we'll, I'll explain what gamification is. That leads us right into lead generation, which is how we bring new people into our businesses. And then I'll give you some case studies. We'll do a live demo. Uh, I'll give you some tips and tricks and recommendations. And then you'll have a chance to ask me lots of questions, I hope, <laughs> if we have enough time and I'll leave you with some uh, links and so on so you can stay in touch. So modern day marketing, here we go about storytelling. Let me tell you first where I'm coming from. Um, Ellen K. Creative Lee markets and innovates, and that's two branches of my business. I do marketing research in a traditional way. I've been a focus group moderator for many, many years and I've done gamification within that process uh, for large corporations. I'm also a consultant, a strategist, and I design and host these interactive tools that we're talking about today. And then on the innovation side, I do facilitation and team building using creative problem solving techniques, and mainly one that I developed that is available in a picture deck. So you're going to learn more about that today, too. So let's start with some definitions, okay? Holistic is a word that I like to use, and I'm not talking about the one that starts with H. I'm talking about a, ma a made-up word that starts with W, because no matter what we're doing as a business entity, we really need to be engaging both with our whole selves and with our audience's whole self. And it's much more then the audio, which I know there are some people who are uh, reading captions right now. Uh, so it's much more than audio, verbal, or visual. So on the marketing side, what we're doing is we're intentionally communicating so that we can generate inquiries, sales, positive reviews, repeat business, and referrals. All of these things keep us thriving. But what's happening under the surface there is the intentional part. We're doing it with some real engagement of our whole self, as well as reaching to the people that we're trying to reach. And on the innovating side, what we do is we flip the way we usually think about problems so that we can see beyond the obvious, unleash something I call inspired logic, tap into archetypal truths, which as an anthropologist, I'm very interested in the way cultures all seem to have these common threads and ways of making sense of the world. And that's what we're tapping into when we flip our habitual thinking. And in the end, what we're doing is we're engaging those really great nonverbal expressive brain cells. So that's what we're doing here. A uh, quick, quick uh, summary of some words that I'm going to be using that you've probably heard. When I talk about a quiz, I'm talking about the somewhat more lighthearted typing tool that's usually scored that you can access uh, on the Internet. Uh, it's usually automated and scored. You can do it paper and pencil as well. And it provides the user with a whole assessment of something. Um, but this is usually short, quick, simple, and uh, fun. And it's also a word that's used at RIT or any other institution where you take a test and you get right or wrong answers. And in that sense, we use quizzes on the Internet as well for trivia games. Um, but the one I'm usually talking about is the more lighthearted typing tool. Assessments are a more in-depth 
version of the same thing. It gives you more of a snapshot of where you are in some sort of a process, and it's also used as a typing tool. And then a form is mostly fact-oriented questions and answers, and you use forms when you have a product that you want people to order, or they're signing on to a new service, or if you go to the doctor, you have to fill out a form, that kind of thing. So that's usually more fact-oriented, and it comes from the person to the business rather than the other way around, whereas the quizzes and assessments are actually giving information to the consumer as well. So when we're talking about interactive marketing, how have we traditionally reached customers? We do marketing research at any stage in the business life cycle, when you're starting up, when you're growing, when you're expanding, when you're cycling back through so that you can rejuvenate. And the way it was done in the very beginning, really in the 30s and the 40s, and then all the way into the 50s and 60s and even the 70s, was women would take a clipboard. These are women who were at home and uh, trying to figure out another way to bring some income in. And they started going door to door and talking to other housewives who were home during the day. They'd sit around the little kitchen table and they would get information and feed it back to brands so that they could do a better job of marketing to those decision makers. So it was around the, din around the kitchen table during the day. Then we move into the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and all of a sudden we have these huge phone banks and people are calling you at dinner time and they've got their little computer-assisted telephone interview going on and it's done on a very large scale. Um, so now we're, we're talking more about sort of dinner time and end of the day and maybe weekends. And then you move into the 2010s and the current environment and almost all marketing research is now being done on the internet and we have access 24 7 365 we're not just around the table during the day we're not just at dinner time bothering you we're actually able to access people at all times any place so that's changed everything <laughs> The process is truly accelerated because we're reaching everyone, anywhere, anytime. And that means that what we used to want to do is just sort of get you to remember my name, right? Oh, LNK Creative, I know what they do. Well, now we, we want more than just that voice, the share of voice. Now we need to get your attention while you're busy doing a gazillion other things. We need share of mind, which means I need you to remember me and notice me uh, in the middle of everything else that's, that's coming across your screen and your phone. Um, and then we have to start thinking about things like search engine optimization and integrity because there's all these clickbait schemes going on where they get you to click on something and then they actually are grabbing your private information. And I don't want to have anything to do with that when I'm trying to do my marketing research. So what I have to do now is become very personalized. And what that means is, so marketing is a process of building towards an action. And the modern day goal is to move that action step up faster and faster. So we not only want to get share of voice, and we want to reach as many people as we can, and we want to get out our little call to action, but we want to do it in an engaged way that happens faster and more visibly. So is everybody still with me? <laughs> Christine, can you uh, let me know if you can still hear me? Yes, we're all following along fabulously. Keep okay, going. Great. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to talk about is that buzzword I mentioned, which is gamification. And I put the little potato heads in the snow there because this is RIT we're talking about, so we have to remember the environment. But also, the idea is not just to um, grab ready-made games or publish games but to be creative about the way we use game elements, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. So in the old style, when we didn't have to be so personalized, 
you would define your audience, you would figure out what they were having trouble with and what we call pain points, and then you would just take your big target and throw your little darts and shoot it out there as much as you can. Just shoot, 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 because eventually you're going to hit the bullseye with a lot of those people. Well, that's not happening anymore. The bullseye's gotten smaller and smaller. The target's gotten smaller. And so what we have to do now is the little girl up there on the right side with the puppets, the little finger puppets, she is seeing her audience. Um, she is showing and telling. And here's where I talked about storytelling becomes very important. And you are interacting as a personality with your audience so that you can engage them more. Let me give you an example. Does anybody remember Dove's uh, campaign before the Real Beauty campaign started? Uh, it used to be, you know, your skin is dry, you need some moisturized soap. And it was all about these beautiful women who were up on the billboards. Well, one day, a staffer at Dove noticed that her daughter was having just a terrible time with these images and was really not feeling very good about the way she looked, that she was never going to measure up. So this woman went to some other people at Dove and found other mothers with daughters and videotaped them talking about what they thought beauty really was and talking about inner beauty and so on. And they took that up to the top of the organization and they said, let's give this a try. And the company said, sure, and bingo, we've got this whole campaign that's, that's telling stories and listening to stories about rethinking beauty, and it has been a tremendous boost for the, for the company. They did very well. So more personalized means that what we're trying to do is get people to know, like, and trust us as a brand or a service or a business person, but we're also trying to get to know, like, and trust the people that we're trying to reach. So again, it's this whole person involved idea. And storytelling becomes very important because there's compassion in storytelling, and we want to engage people in conversation, and that is why we're going to gamify <laughs> what we do. Okay, so what do I mean by gamification? It is the use of game elements to increase interaction and motivation. And the easiest examples are compliance and uh, loyalty programs and apps that you can get on your phone. So the buyer loyalty programs have game element in them because the more I shop or the more I fly on American Airlines, the more free tickets I get, oh boy, you know, so it's motivating me to, to stick with them. Uh, tracking gadgets, I put two examples there. One is the Fitbit, so, you know, I want to get in my thousand steps today and I want to compete with my friends and uh, I, get, I get feedback right away. Um, and Winstreak is basically an app that has taken your to-do list and turned it into a game and you can, go on there and type in what you want to win today and what you want to win tomorrow, and then you get this ongoing uh, list of, of wins, and you, and you can feel really good about it. Um, collaborative games, there's one called Pact Mobile, which actually takes the, um, a whole group of people who sign on to this, and they agree to meet certain health uh, goals, exercise, diet, you know, weight loss, those who do not meet their goals have to pay, and those who do meet their goals get paid. So the winners get paid by the losers. I have no idea who would do that or why they would or how they would keep that honest, but they're doing it, and it's apparently very successful. Um, and then there's another one called Super Better, which is an interactive game with all kinds of challenges, quests, points, and rewards and you get a whole team of people to cheer you on and um, everybody gets little updates and you can play this game together. So it's another way of getting people to uh, be compliant with their goals. So there's other things that can be gamified too. And you can do this either in person or online and there are some gamified elements that can happen in either place. So in person, 
if you are at a networking meeting or at a conference or uh, meeting with people, you can print your cards in a fun little shape. I recently redid my cards so that they're samples of my InterMuse um, creativity cards on one side and the other side is my business information. Uh, you can print print your information on little, you know, uh, poker chips. Um, you can have all kinds of props or toys or symbols when you're at a networking meeting and you pass them out and ask people to uh, think about your business in terms of that symbol and so on. You can use movement music. On the other side, online, there's all these apps. You can actually create your own GIFs now, the little moving uh, pictures. Um, you can do, there's a lot of video marketing going on. Um, and then quizzes and assessments, which we're gonna talk about again in a minute. And in either case, you can ask questions and engage people on social media sites using all kinds of fun things like storytelling prompts, Mad Lib style questions, contests, hide your giveaway in a little puzzle, you know, use jokes and stories and so on. So the, so the idea is just to make it as fun as you can and get people to not think only with their head. And that's because we actually don't make decisions in our heads. We think we do, but we do it with our hearts. So that's what we're aiming for here. So now I'm going to tell you a little more about lead generation. And the um, idea here is we're, what we're trying to do is get as much feedback as we can. So we don't want the communication to go one way. Uh, and on this graph that I put up here, you'll see that we're looking for having as high a quantity and quality of feedback from the people that we're trying to reach in order to get them more engaged. And I, I put both quantity and quality there because if you get a lot of people, like say with a blog post, you can get a lot of people to um, read your blog post and maybe even get a lot of people to comment, but you're not necessarily gonna get the kind of comments you want. <laughs> you can't control that as much. So you don't have both quantity and quality with a blog post. Um, and the newsletter is not even on there because that's really a one-way communication. So I'm looking for the places where we can get people to respond to what we're um, asking or presenting. Uh, focus groups are one of my favorites because you get an extremely high quality of feedback, but that's done on a smaller scale it's done in small groups and it's done, you know, by asking a lot of very in-depth questions. So it's very important for growing your business or for learning about a new product or service, but it's not necessarily going to get your whole audience engaged. When you get into forms and other surveys, you're starting to reach a higher quantity and you're also starting to get a better quality of feedback. And then when you get to the interactive quizzes, you really can start to do both very well. And you can do this very cost effectively, and that's why I love them so much. Uh, I put multivariate studies at the very top there. That would be a, a huge investment, but for a larger organization, this works very well to find out exactly what price points work, to find out um, what kind of choices people are making, to actually cluster the audience into segments so that you can offer different um, products and services for different people. But that's not really where a small business would be going. So I see a little question there that just popped up. I'm just gonna answer that real quick. Multivariate studies, uh, the little asterisk at the bottom, are any kind of um, study that takes more than one uh, variable into account when we're looking at the result. So for example, uh, you can you can uh, ask a whole bunch of people, you know, what they think about something and then divide their answers up by the younger people and the older people. That's a very simple multivariate analysis. So there's that. Okay. Um, so the first thing we want to do once we're trying to start interacting with our audience out there, and this is as we're thinking about expanding the audience, you wanna figure out where are your people, right? 
So there's a lot of different ways you can reach them. You can reach them through blog posts and newsletters, which is where the content is. Um, you can reach them through ads. You can reach them through webinars like this. You can reach them through referrals. Once you've got some happy clients, then they go out and they tell all their friends through networking in person or uh, even in face on Facebook on, or LinkedIn on social media sites. And then through uh, web searches, they can find you if you've done some uh, search engine optimization and, and some blog posting and so on. So first thing to do is figure out where are the people. Then we want to really figure out who are the people and how are the people. And that's where the quizzes, assessments, and forms come in. And of course, there are other methods, but those are the ones I'm focusing on for lead generation uh, today. And what you have happening here is you are pulling people in through all your content, your ads, your webinars, and so on, through your marketing channels. And then you're reaching them with these quizzes, assessments, or forms but you're also getting feedback back from them. So this is where the communication is starting to go around in both directions. And if you think back to my definition of holistic marketing and of shifting the whole engagement forward, what we're trying to do with communication is you have your brand and it's mixing in there with your customers. And the whole idea is I want to expand my reach. I want to identify, I'm not going to lose sight of identifying what their problems are and how I particularly can really address those problems, those pain points. I want to show my brand brilliance and I want to give them a chance to try it. So this is where it starts to get interactive. I want to demonstrate and sample what it is that I'm offering so they can get comfortable with it and begin to know, like, and trust me. And if I do this right, then the results over on the right side are, I really am gonna learn more about who they are, how they're resonating, why they're resonating. I'm going to weave stories back and forth, my story, their story. I'm going to begin a relationship. I'm gonna stand out that share of mind that we're reaching for, and I'm gonna be spreading the word because they're gonna start doing some of the work for me by sharing what I've, what I've uh, put out there. So how do we connect the brand and the customer through communication using quizzes, assessments, surveys, and forms? And here's where it really starts to uh, separate out. So on the right side of the screen, you'll see there that the surveys and the forms are the more customer-oriented way of getting feedback and opinions and information they are very important. I would highly recommend that you think about how you're getting information from your customers. But if you really want to go and interact with them and make it more gamified, you're gonna be on the left side of this communication ball. And that's because it's focused more on your brand and not so much on the customer. And in a quiz or assessment, you have the opportunity to really show your expertise. You're gonna educate, provide insight. You're going to find out how well this person fits with your brand. And you're gonna have some fun and be interactive. And you get feedback and they get immediate feedback. So it's a, a very quick, automated, um, modern day way of engaging. So, now I'm going to explain this just a little bit more in a visual. Uh, what we just talked about is all those marketing channels are over there on the left. So you have your website, all these social media sites, your email list, um, and then blogs and newsletters are kind of in between marketing channels and content because that's a way of really beginning to put more ongoing content out to your customers. And it's a little more engaged than a website that sits there and waits for people to come to it. Um, and actually social media kind of belongs over there too. Uh, but once you get into a, a communication pattern with your, with your customers, that's where the quizzes and assessments can really begin to provide benefits for both the customer and for you. 
The customer benefits by getting personalized insight, special offers, they get a demonstration of your product or service, they get a sample, and then what you get is that they are also learning why they should believe in your brand. There's something in marketing called a reason to believe, and that uh, is, is really critical. And so both you and the customer are getting a reason to believe in your brand. You are getting their email address um, because it's an, a, a very even exchange here. And you're also going to have access to some statistics. So we've got an ongoing engagement and relationship that starts with the marketing channels. And this is all sort of chicken and egg. Uh, the marketing channels and the content feed back and forth to each other to provide all those benefits. Okay, as lead generation, um, quizzes and assessments, this is why I love them so much. They provide instantaneous insight as an opt-in gift. So um, I really am not a fan of those lead pages where you know, every time I go to a website, I get this pop-up screen that says, quick, you know, give me your email and I'm going to give you a gift. And I always feel like that's so in my face and I have to make it go away when I'm not interested. Uh, quizzes and assessments are a little more um, a subtle invitation, and they they give that opt-in gift, but in exchange for, um, you know, it's it's a more engaged way of of getting people to click on on your uh, uh, to give you your email. Uh, you're also inviting new people to engage because you can put these quizzes and assessments out to people that you've never met. You can zero in on what matters to the individual and personalize the sales pitch or even the product that you're offering them. Interested customers can also go end up right on your website, on your scheduler, on your social media site, wherever you want to send them. And you can use quizzes and assessments in team building, in hiring, in innovating, uh, you can sort people out using a very customized approach. So lead generation quizzes are used to spark interest from a new audience so that the customer learns something new about themselves, gets a demonstration of your expertise, and finds out what they need from you. And client assessments, new client assessments, are the more, more complex version of that which is used when, before you begin to work with someone, if you have something like a coaching business or any kind of uh, consulting or service, uh, you, you might want to know more about your new customer. Why did they get interested in what you're offering? What do they want to achieve by working with you? What are their specific needs? What have they tried before? And how did they find you? Those kinds of things. And then the third one is uh, forms, which uh, we're not talking about so much today. So now we're going to go into the case studies and a live demo. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of explaining still. And then uh, in your chat window, um, I think Jerome is going to put us a, a uh, link so that when we get to that point, you can you can uh, actually take it with me or you can follow along on the screen and I will um, give you a demo right on the screen. So uh, I just want to make one quick note about the platforms that I use at LNK Creative to provide quizzes and assessments and forms for all of my clients. I've actually ended up with two different platforms. I've done all the research. I can tell you anything you want to know about all of the um, quiz, uh, quiz and survey platforms that are out there available for use. And I've narrowed it down to two that I love. The first one's called Typeform, and it's a very simple format. You can do it yourself, or you can work, uh, if you were working with me, I have a premium account with them, and I can do a little bit more, and you don't have to pay full price for it, and that's why I like that. Um, but on the high end, most of the uh, demos that I'm going to give you today or that you have links to have been done on the higher end platform. That's where I got started. Most universities actually use this platform, including RIT. You've recently switched 
to it, or they have. Um, and it's used for social scientific studies, and it's very university-based, very academic, and that's one of the reasons I love it. The other reason I love it is that I have an, an excellent support team, so I can do anything I want to <laughs> with this platform. So I just wanted to kind of give um, a brief background there that to make it more affordable for businesses of all sizes, I've actually vetted out the right platforms to use. Um, so I'll tell you just briefly some case studies that I have up on my website and that you can take anytime you want. Um, and the first one is, how quiz ready are you? That's an example of that simple platform that I just described. The type form platform is used for my how quiz ready are you? You can take that anytime. Um, and it basically just gives a very simple scored assessment um, so that you can kind of review your marketing plan and decide if you are ready for reaching out to more people or not. So it's very simple, uh, very engaged, and, um, you know, doesn't require that anybody interact with me any more than that. It's, uh, it's a, a nice, um, uh, Simple platform. Anyway, <laughs> explained that already. Okay, the next one, at the accent quiz is still in development, but it's an example of going into a corporation where my client, Betty Ann Leesburg Lane, who's wonderful at um, helping people with their dialects, and she does it, she, she works with people who have an accent in a North American environment, and she helps them not lose their culture while they're uh, becoming more easily understood. So she can go into a big corporation with this little quiz and she can um, t uh, tell the organization X percent of your organization is struggling and can easily be helped with this. And so now she can develop a program for them. So it's a sales tool for her. Uh, and that again is a, a rather simple form. Uh, the more complex ones, uh, we're going to do the demo on the how are you thinking one so that you can get a quick sample of the creativity system at the same time. So this is going to be an example of how a quiz would be used for a product, to actually sell product. And then what's your EMF exposure is an example of a mid-sized corporation that wanted to cut down on their uh, the time they were spending helping to sell their products to their best customers, they would spend a lot of time on the phone and people would have to fill out lots of forms and go back and forth until they figured out which uh, electromagnetic field protection shield, which is what they sell, would be right for that person. Well, now it all happens online very quickly and it's fun and it's visual and they've spent a lot less time with each customer before they make a sale. So they're loving that one. Um, they also created the next one, which is what type of highly sensitive person are you? And that one is uh, was developed over six months with uh, me, myself, and another expert, the expert in energy sensitivity. And we came up with a really unusual way of looking at um, how people respond to other people's energy, to screen energy, to, you know, uh, all different kinds of energy. And that one has expanded their market exponentially. They've gone from about 1,000 on their mailing list to over 5,000 on their mailing list. And then the last one there is an example of an assessment that's done for a coach, a local coach who's also very, very good. Her name is Ann Moriarty, and she works with people who have been through some kind of transition, uh, divorce or loss of someone, or they've moved or they've switched jobs or whatever. Um, and she takes them through a rather extensive life wheel coach, um, life coaching wheel, it's called where uh, she assesses the different parts of their life, and it's also very visual. And when they come into her uh, free uh, half-hour assessment, they both have already started to do some of the work. So they're starting from a really good platform. So those are some of the case studies. 
that I wanted to share with you. So the live demo that we're going to do is how are you thinking about something that you want to do or a dream or a problem that you've had? And what happened is I created this deck after doing a whole lot of research with authors and entrepreneurs, and I discovered that there are 16 pairs of these different kinds of energies or um, sort of insightful ways of, of thinking that motivate us all the time, and they have our best interests at heart. They're sort of like little characters out there. So there's 16 what I call mentors and 16 muses, and each one is a pair. And you're going to learn a little bit more about that as you take this quiz. So at this point, um, everyone is welcome to click on the link that he just put up. I just saw that go up. Um, or you can just follow along on the screen. I'm going to do it for you, and I've got a, hopefully a little shortcut here. And here it comes. So um, when you find this link, if let's say uh, you're, you know, on one of my social media pages or on my website, and you say, oh, I'm curious about this, what is it? This is the screen that will come up. It welcomes you to the archetype balancing quiz, tells you a little bit about who I am and why I created this deck. Um, and and then I'm also, I'm doing two things with this example and with this quiz. I'm teaching people a little bit about what I do with quizzes. Uh, so this is sort of like the hall of mirrors. You take a quiz to find out what kind of quiz you might want to have me help you create. <laughs> um, and so this is serving that function, but it's also an example of a product demo. So you're going to learn about the, the quiz deck as well. I'm sorry, the archetype deck as well. Um, and then I always put some sort of important um, information here that I want to want people to know that they're going to get something from me by putting their email in. And uh, I am not going to use that for anything other than to communicate with them about this. Uh, and they can unsubscribe at any time. So it is opting into my mailing list, but I want to do it in a fair way. So unfortunately, what I typed in before is not still there, so I'm going to put it back in really quickly here for you. And that is a required field. I know that. So that's why I had to type the whole thing in. Uh, but then down here is some optional information that people can give. And then we click, click Go to the next screen. And we want to know, are you taking this for business efforts or for personal reasons? I'm clicking on business. What is your intention for your business at this time? Briefly describe the main benefit you wish to provide or achieve. Show off. I want to show off. Which of the following best describes the phase you are in with this intention? Now we can click on more than one. I'm just going to click on one here. And this is going to tell us which group of muses and mentors are going to be active for you. So I have four sets of four, and you could actually click on all four of those and get lots and lots of questions. But we're just going to do one today. So now you're going to see some descriptions of these qualities that are active when you are in the mode of fruition, which is the one I just clicked on, where my idea is fully formed and active. And what we're going to see below are some mentor archetypes on the left, which are ways of thinking that keep you grounded and moving forward. And then on the right, there are ways of thinking that keep you motivated and inspired. So I want us to click on one button in each row to describe how I feel about my intention of showing off my archetype uh, card deck. And I'm not worried about getting this right. If I'm feeling both or bouncing back and forth, between the descriptions in a row, then I can just go right into the middle. So I'm either just like the mentor, just like the muse, or somewhere in the middle. And the first one is focusing on my skills or focusing on my gifts. I would say both. Am I focused on physical health or spiritual well-being? I'm actually going to click over here on the right for all of these because um, I want 
I, I want a certain outcome <laughs> to show you today. So the next one was emphasis on organization and efficiently using what I have, or way over here, emphasize on receiving and abundance. And these are all qualities that I discovered were balanced. So sometimes we're more filled with gratitude for what has manifested, what has shown up, or we're just feeling satisfied and proud of our achievements. These are not exactly opposites. They're just different kinds of energies. So now I've clicked on go to the next screen. And my last question here is to pick, and I'm just going to tell you what to do here so we don't have to read all of that. But I'm asking you to pick one fruition archetype that I feel strongly about as I work towards my intention of showing you my deck, right? So uh, what I've done here is I put the both sides of the cards in this set of four cards. So you'll see eight images. There are four purple ones and four blue ones. And today I'm going to pick this one, Abundance and Prosperity. And that's because I feel strongly about it. And again, I'm not thinking about it too much. So hopefully I didn't go through that too quickly. Um, but I want to get to the result here. And that is, congratulations, your archetypal energies can be described as, with my goal of showing off, my inner muses are most active at this time. What that means is the inner muses hold the wisdom of creating, inspiring, and natural flowing. Um, they're sort of the more feminine kinds of qualities. They know when to ease your mind to rest and replenish, they are the stuff of dream time. If you're immersed in inner muse energy, you're open to receiving, trusting, and growing. And then um, I think right now this is not working, but I have created it so that you can actually click on that image and share it on Facebook. So again, I'm asking my uh, customers to help me spread the excitement about what I'm doing. Uh, and But then if I click on email my results, which I'm not going to do right now, um, and those of you who are following along with your own link, if you click on email my results, it's actually going to send you a lot more information. And I will go back to the um, PowerPoint so that I can show you what that information looks like. So we just took the um, quiz, and that last screen that came up was a very general kind of a result. And down there on the bottom, it said the button triggers the autoresponder email that will go to the email that we gave at the beginning. And what happens with that is in that email, now I've, I've um, actually just sent out to anyone who just took the quiz automatically without having to lift a finger. They've learned more, they can learn more about the system because it gives a little more explanation than I could give in a quick quiz. Uh, I give them the, those general results again, so they're going to see that inner muse, um, in my case, the inner muse picture again, and it's going to tell a little bit more about what the muses do for you. And then uh, I also put in the picture that was chosen actually picked the wrong one, <laughs> but uh, so in this case, the person picked the gratitude fullness of life card, and that actually is a picture of my husband and my dog, so now you know who I'm married to and you don't even see me. Um, and it also gives a little bit more information about that. In the guidebook that comes with the deck, I explain the upsides and the downsides of focusing too much on either the muse or the mentor in any given pair. So in this case, there are good things about focusing on gratitude and fullness of life, but if you do it too much, you can really get stuck. And the same thing with the complement, which is the mentor on the left, if you are focusing on your achievements and, and being satisfied, that can be really fulfilling and wonderful. But if that's all you're doing, you end up getting stuck or depressed. Um, so, so all of this is in the email. And there's also access to an article download and uh, an offer of a discount. And you can actually click right away and buy the deck 
um, or you can schedule an appointment with me. So again, it's, it's a very jam-packed way of demonstrating what I do, uh, what my product is, um, and beginning to learn something about my customer. And, you know, I've opened the door to continue talking, even if they don't want to buy what I'm offering. Okay, so the last few minutes here, what I'm going to do is um, tell you how you use these tools. And I see that we are kind of running out of time, so I want to leave time for questions. So I'll go through this very quickly. Um, the content and the interactivity of what you're doing are the really critical thing to remember. Whenever you're using question and answer, any kind of communication with your clients, you want to catch their attention, especially new people that you haven't met before. You want to keep them engaged, get them to your website or to you, and help them experience the insight and the benefits of working with you and buying your products. So it's all insight based on your expertise. That's the key thing to remember. So what you want to do is go deep, <laughs> which means really know what it is you're offering. What's so great about it? Why is it going to help people? And where did you come from? Tell your story about it. Be bold about how you're telling your story about it. Um, drill down to who you're really talking to. Who's your best customer? Find the ones that you've already been working with and ask them. Uh, engage them in conversation so you can really understand what it is you're doing with them. And then identify the traits and behaviors that can predict someone who's going to want what you're offering. Brainstorm and get help. Ask, listen, ask. Never assume you know what someone is thinking or feeling. And that's the biggest mistake I see people make uh, when they create their own forms or quizzes or surveys. They uh, often put words in people's mouths and leave out a huge group of people because they haven't really talked to anyone and, and they've assumed that they know what everyone's thinking. Use words, scales, and choices that are inclusive. Don't be afraid of getting some negative feedback because you always get a chance to ask why. Why didn't that work for you? And I'm not trying to serve everyone anyway, so I need to understand who did and who did not see the value of the service or the product. And once you have these great tools, get out there, make yourself visible, Make sure that uh, you have these links on your website homepage, on the top, on the side. I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, be mindful of search engine optimization. That really can do a lot of the work for you. Find groups where your information is really appreciated on Facebook, on LinkedIn, even on Pinterest. You can actually appeal to people by uh, joining these different groups and then starting a conversation and networking that way. And then when you put your quiz or your assessment or your form or your survey up, you're going to have people who already know, like, and trust you and want to know more. Uh, post regularly using engaging images and captions and videos and so on. Uh, blog or email about the results of your quizzes and contests and things. Uh, the, game of, the gamification can keep going <laughs> to let people know what you're learning. And make the link accessible at events, in person or online. If you advertise, make sure you're doing it in your own voice. Use easy to remember either tiny or bit.ly uh, URLs. I like bit.ly because it uh, gives really good information back. For me, I can track the way people are clicking on my links. Um, use share buttons when you can. Make it fun. Gamify it. And don't forget, Follow through. <laughs> so that autoresponder is really just the first step. I really need to follow up. And the takeaways here are that gamification personalizes the customer interaction quickly and easily, increasing engagement. Storytelling is so important. Meet them where they are by asking. And don't be afraid to show and tell and use storytelling in your interactions. And in my mind, quiz, a quiz is one modern day way of doing all of the above. And you know you're going to be quiz ready if you have a brilliant solution or product, you want a broader appeal, and you have ready access. Okay, I'm ready for questions.
Wow, Alan, this was information packed and really valuable. And the questions have started to come in. So um, we have a question from Kevin. Um, He's, he's feeling the overload, too. He wants to know if you see a lot of consumers experiencing noise and interference from the 24-7 news cycle, um, the email updates, alerts, and all of that. He says that people cannot focus on taking a quiz or assessment, so the data isn't as good as, say, phone banking 10 years ago. So how do, how do you address that, um, cutting through all the noise? Yeah, you do that by uh, getting into specific groups. You need to really understand what it is that you're offering, who you're trying to reach, and then figure out where those people are. So there are certain Facebook groups, for example, with the highly sensitive person quiz, uh, the way she, the way that client managed to go from 1,000 to 5,000 people in just a few months was by going on about a hundred different Facebook groups and engaging with them and talking to them. And then when she put the link in there, they were all really excited about it and they, and they followed through. So um, it's, it, it, I mean, you can still do some of the traditional, you know, list building by uh, finding a list. You can buy a list and then you can send out a survey and so on and so forth. Um, but if, I think the best way to uh, cut down on the noise is to zero in on the communities where your message is going to be received. That's, that's great and very clear and concise. Um, we have pretty much run out of time for further questions, sadly, and I know a lot of questions are coming up. Um, so what I recommend to everyone who is listening in and viewing today uh, is that you email your questions to ritalum, that's ritalum, at rit.edu, or tweet them to at rit underscore alumni with the hashtag meritwebinars. And we'll direct your, those questions to you, Ellen, and Ellen will have the chance to respond because she is a highly interactive presenter. <laughs> and everyone, there was so much to, to capture in today's um, webinar. Stay, you know, rest assured, you will receive an email from uh, MeRIT webinars within the next week. It'll give you a link to this recording, complete with captions. And Ellen, thanks so much to you. You took time out of a busy day to share your expertise with the whole RIT family. And thanks to all of the Tigers out there listening and viewing, um, alumni, parents, and friends who joined in today. We hope you'll join us for the next webinar, which actually comes right up tomorrow. It will be presented by the director of RIT's Center for Computational Relativity and Gravitation, Dr. Manuela Campanelli. And you'll learn how Dr. Campanelli and her team of researchers contributed to an experiment that confirmed Einstein's theory of general relativity, proving that space is not fixed but flexible and can be warped by massive objects. So mind-bending information today, mind-bending information tomorrow. <laughs> So thanks again, Ellen, and thanks to all. You can exit the webinar by simply closing the WebEx window, and do let us know what you thought of this webinar. A brief survey will pop up. It's not quite as um, pretty as Ellen's survey, but it is informative, and we appreciate your input on the MeRIT webinars. So exit the webinar, take the survey, and have a great day. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>